You're listening to Sergeant Freedom's Platoon and more here as we're going to talk about tyranny and here in Pennsylvania, a very important discussion that um, I came across on Fox News yesterday. So I'm going to let you listen to the whole interview and wrap it up from here. But guess what? Now you have Democrat governors pulling the, exactly the same trick, saying they're going to withhold funds from local areas that don't enforce their shutdowns. And they're doing this even as we're seeing the incredible cost, for example, just one part of it, which is the closure of schools in terms of children's mental health. And yet these governors are threatening to withhold funds. And yet there's not a peep from the same people that were complaining when Donald Trump was threatening the same thing. The worst of it all is, listen to the way some of them talk. Just listen to this language from Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf. These folks are choosing to desert in the face of the enemy. To those politicians who decide to cave into this coronavirus, they need to understand the consequences of their cowardly act. What an odious little Tim Pop tyrant he is. I couldn't believe it when I heard that. Um, Charlie... Your response. I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, you have these governors now that are so out of touch with the citizens they actually actually represent. If the left did not have double standards, they wouldn't have standards at all. They are crying foul when the president wants to actually enforce immigration policy through the direction of federal funds. And then when they actually want to then enforce their own out-of-touch ruling class proposals, they use the very same tactics that, tactics that they accused the president of. So now you're seeing a tale of two Americas. You see these governors like Tom Wolf, and you see other governors like Andrew Cuomo and Gavin Newsom that just seem to be keep on digging in to these now failed unscientific decisions and proposals that their citizens are starting to resist. And part of what being a populist is, Steve, where you and I have really tried to articulate the last couple of years, is listening to the people. The people are upset. They want their liberty back. They want their freedom back. It is essential more than ever. And a big part of that agenda, KT, um, which, which I know we've talked about this, it's so important, is the decentralization of power. And you're seeing with these governors, they're, they're not, in, I mean, for example, in Pennsylvania, saying, no, you can't, even if your county might be completely different to the count, the, you know, a more urban area, you can't go your own way. That is just the opposite of what our constitution was all about, which is the decentralization of power. Yeah, and I'm in, I'm in Florida right now and have been since the virus broke out. Florida is handling this very differently. The governor of Florida has left it up to the individual counties. Some counties, sparsely populated, have had absolutely very little problem. They've had very few yeah. cases. They've had very few deaths. Other parts of Florida have had very high concentrations. So he's left it up to the, to the counties. The counties, in many cases, have left it up to the mayors. Why? Because the people closest to the ground who know their populations, they know their communities, they know which communities have a problem, which communities don't. And as long as everybody's following the common sense things, like social distancing, wash your hands, etc., then it really should be left up to the smallest group of society to figure out. And I want to contrast this to China. China is the ultimate expression of authoritarian big government, right? Mm. It is a total surveillance state. They require, even China, surveillance state that it is, is having separate um, regulations, whether you're in Wuhan or whether you're in Beijing or whether you're in Shanghai. So even the communist Chinese, even the most authoritarian <laughs> nation in the world, isn't quite as authoritarian as some of the gov Democrat governors in the United States. And then Lisa, I mean, what about the language there from Tom Wolf? I mean, I just staggering to insult people who, who are just trying to do the right thing and, and earn a living now. I couldn't believe that language. Well, and I think the biggest challenge, too, is a lot of the elected officials aren't making any sense. And quite honestly, we're being governed by morons. And if you look at the city of Boston, <laughs> the mayor there... It's true, though. The mayor there delayed reopening because of a serological study that showed that, you know, 90 percent of the city, the citizens in the city have not uh, contracted coronavirus. They think only 10 percent has. So he's not going to reopen. But the reason they haven't is because the city has been closed. So how are they going to get to you know higher levels with the city shut down? So it just defies logic. It makes no sense. And then you've got Governor Como saying that no one should be prosecuted for nursing home deaths. Well, of course he holds that theory. It was his mandate and his administration's mandate that sent COVID patients into the nursing homes 
and then infected other people. And unfortunately, so many people have died because of that failed policy. And lastly, we've had so many officials tell us that testing is the key to reopening. Well, Como was complaining the other day that one third of the facilities, the testing capabilities are not being utilized because not enough people are showing up. So the, the biggest challenge here is we have people that make no sense. They're not doing it according to the data. And so I think that's why so many people are really distrusting their leaders right now. Okay, so that, you've just reminded me of something I've been wanting to do on the show for a long time. I can't quite do it. I'm not going to do it now and waste time. But it's, it's a sticker oh, no. <laughs> that, ben Dom, that Ben Dominich gave me, who, who, founder of The Federalist. It's absolutely brilliant. And I need, I need a visual prop for it. So that's a tease for an upcoming show. All Quick right. last word on, on the point I made um, just at the beginning of that, Charlie, on schools. I mean, why aren't schools being reopened? You can't going to get the well, economy look, open if, if parents can't go to work. That's exactly right. At Turning Point USA, we represent over 2,000 college and high schools across the country. And young people have been shown through data to not be as at risk as other parts of the population, yet their proms have been canceled, commencement have been canceled. Final point, Steve, is what about the schools that will never reopen? The Catholic schools on the eastern seaboard in New Jersey, the archdiocese says dozens of these Catholic schools will never reopen because they'll go bankrupt and families can't afford the tuition anymore. So it's not like you can just turn the switch back on and all of a sudden you can go back to these schools we once knew and loved and grew up in. There will be an incalculable cost if we continue these draconian lockdowns. There you go. Exactly right. And what you're hearing is uh, on the briefing today with uh, Governor Cuomo is that they have contact tracers in place. Uh, what I would say is that here in Pennsylvania, that probably won't be any different. Um, how to get your children in school um, and how to get a home school or some type of schooling it's going to be up to the parents and the teachers to reorganize and try to figure out a way to get your children back into the education system. Because if the governor shuts down the schools and starts pulling funds, um, it'll be, it's probably going to go to the Supreme Court, as you know. Um, anytime they start threatening to take away education funds, federal funds, it'll be up to the it's going to be up to the Supreme Court um, because I think it can only go so far. That That's just my opinion. Um, just listening to how they're going to have people go up to your door and they're going to uh, force immunization. It's not going to work in a, in a world of tyranny. Um, that's tyrannical and that's in, uh, infringement on our constitutional rights and freedoms. And, you know, it says in our Constitution, we have freedoms and liberties, and infringing on our freedoms and liberties is what the issue is. Uh, when they start threatening to take, uh, fining and threatening, then it, it has to go to court. And, and that's, that's the end of what we have come to in the court of public opinion, because I, I, I really do not think it could go any further than what it already is. So here in the court of public opinion, that's our ruling. We have to go to court.